A baseboard heater is simply wires and a heating element in a steel casing. They make the element using a strip of paper thin aluminum 19 centimeters wide. It's lubricated with soap, then goes through a forming machine. A die punches the strip into little squares called fins. They measure 16 by 20 millimeters each and have a circle in the middle. The machine pierces the circles and cuts the fins apart. This machine churns out 600 fins per minute. It stacks them on steel tubes, the lengths of which vary according to the length of the heater. As each tube fills to capacity, a worker takes it away to be wired up. Elsewhere in the factory, meanwhile, they make the heater's casing using what's known as cold rolled steel, a flexible type of steel that can be worked without using heat. After a squirt of oil for lubrication, the first die cuts holes for attaching the baseboard to the wall. Then the second die cuts holes for attaching the heating element to the casing. Now the steel travels through what's called the roll former, a machine whose series of rollers successively bend the flat strip of metal one fold at a time into the shape of the casing. From start to finish, 20 rollers make 20 bends. The process takes exactly 146 seconds per casing. After the last fold, a computer-controlled die cuts the casing to the required length. The higher the heater's wattage, the longer the casing has to be. Models range from 300 watts, about half a meter long, to 2,500 watts, almost two and a half meters long. Next, they put a steel junction box on each end of the casing. These hold the wires that the electrician connects to the house wiring. Workers spot weld both junction boxes simultaneously. After a thorough washing, computer-controlled sprayers coat the casings in paint powder. Then it's into an oven for about 20 minutes at 185 degrees Celsius. This transforms the powder to liquid, drying it instantly. After running a red wire for the electrical current the length of the casing, they rig up what's called a linear high limit temperature control, a safety device that prevents the unit from overheating and catching fire. Gas inside the temperature control expands under intense heat, triggering the device to cut the current. Now they install supports to hold the heating element in place. They're made of satin coat steel, a rust-resistant metal. As the element heats up, it naturally expands. To prevent it from scratching against the metal casing and making annoying noises, they install a heat-resistant plastic bushing. Now they connect the red wire that'll carry the electrical current to the heating element's black wire, capping it with a wire connector. They clip it to the cover of the junction box, easy access for the electrician installing the baseboard. Then they close the junction box cover. At the other end, they connect the red wire and the black wire to the temperature control wire. This runs the electrical current through the safety device at all times. After a voltage test, they close her up and snap on a panel to cover the element. Being toasty warm is now just an installation away.